Hi friends, in the last class we discussed about hydroelectric power generation and the uh, different classification associated with it, right? And in this lecture we will go further in about hydroelectric power generation. Okay, the last class we discussed like uh, based on the water regulation or based on the head how can we classify dams, right? There are runoff uh, type, uh, runoff water uh, river type dams and there are large dams. Okay, and there are uh, medium uh, and based on head we have medium head as well as uh, small head and the large head. So high or high head plants. So these all we discussed in the last class. So we are going further uh, in this class on hydroelectric power generation. Okay. So basically what is the importance of this hydroelectric power plants? The one thing is that they are multi-purpose uh, kind of uh, uh, applications you can say. Like uh, one, when you construct a dam, it is not only used for hydropower generation. In our country, we have a, long, a big problem of like river flood uh, floods occurring due to rain. So a dam mostly will help in uh, the flood control also. Okay. So uh, unless uh, such a uh, big uh, flood comes, otherwise really the dam controls uh, the fl flood and river flood control is there and as at the same time there are many dams which has got applications not only in power generation but also for uh, what I can say uh, the irrigation also like uh, so some of the dams in Andhra if you take. Uh, they are, they not only uh, make electricity but a major application also goes for uh, irrigation purpose because otherwise they are all lost to the sea and those uh, things you are able to uh, uh, what I can say restrict that water flow and it will be used uh, uh, in a restricted way through uh, for agriculture without the canal systems uh, whether it is in Punjab or whether it is in Andhra then all the cultivation and agriculture uh, agriculture sector will be in a great trouble. So that's about ir irrigation. Then we need water for drinking water. So all these purposes are getting meet at the same time we are able to uh, take our objective which is what power generation. So that is uh, one importance of that. Then another thing is that when you compare hydroelectric power plant with a thermal power plant or any other power plant, uh, the controllability is much higher when it comes to hydroelectric power plant. Like it is a quick starting type of power plant. Like uh, as you know, uh, you, uh, through your penstock, your water comes down to the turbine uh, from the dam, and there you have a valve system which can which can be just opened or uh, closed. Uh, as you can see, in five minutes, very uh, in very less time, it can be opened or closed, or you can control the flow of water very easily compared to a thermal power plant at all. Like in thermal power plant, you have a, a huge furnace in which you are. Uh, so, sorry, huge boiler in which you are uh, boiling your water to a high amount of heat by firing coal, right? That temperature you cannot reduce it at an instant or that requires more time or in order to start also like thermal power plant are something which are working perpetually or they are working all the time. You cannot, you usually don't come and close the, uh, what I can switch off a thermal power plant. That never happens. But when it comes to hydroelectric power plants, the, then we can, we are able to control very faster. In five minutes, we can uh, provide power on need. So that is one uh, important advantage when it comes to the hydroelectric power plant. Quick starting, we can start the hydroelectric power plant at a faster rate. Okay, we will see the advantage of that later. Then a very interesting thing is that when you take a thermal power plant or a nuclear power plant, you need a fuel so that you have to fire it, right? And coal or whether it is some uranium or whatever else it is, these all uh, these all conventional uh, power plants. And the, the major component which is the fuel and there you need to put some money or that needs some cost right. But when it comes to hydroelectric power plant you, uh, you are running cost. Running cost is means water uh, water which is already kept in the dam and it is there is no price. It is priceless <laughs> at the same time or there is no price for that okay and both are true. So 
it is having a ne negligible trending cost because you don't have to pay anybody once you constructed the dam and you have water then it is having negligible rending cost so these are the uh, uh, what i can say uh, importance of this and uh, when you take the history of power plants uh, our hydroelectric power plant is the first one that uh, or it is the oldest one even whether you take india or the world it is the first uh, it is the first one created you can search uh, google which is the first power plant uh, in india or in the in the world you will find that it is what that is uh, hydroelectric power plant and it is used why because it is also cheaper also mainly uh, this uh, power plant or this uh, water potential uh, the potential energy of water to be used this concept was already there uh, from old times that is why we were using water wheels i think you are uh, you might have heard about water wheels right they, they were used uh, as a what i can say as a prime mover for a mill or different purposes uh, long before from there only we are coming to the, uh, we are getting a picture of how it can be used for what power generation okay so that is why that is the oldest and cheapest method of power generation which is hydroelectric power plants okay and let me say these are some of the advantages also when it comes to hydroelectric power plants and then what are the disadvantages main disadvantage is that in case of hydroelectric power plant uh, you sh should invest a lot of money when it comes to where, when it is about building that uh, dam right means it, it will require a high uh, capital cost to build that because uh, when uh, uh, it is about what a large area that is why the second point is that land per megawatt is large when you construct a thermal power plant you need a, 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 a area for constructing your boiler and all or a nuclear power plant some area is needed but afterwards your uh, fuel is like what constantly utilized and it is gone right but when you come to a dam site it is a, such a huge thing like a, it, it's always a tourist spot right so a dam like idiki dam if you take it's, it's, it's catchment area is in square kilometers that much uh, uh, larger area is there okay so uh, that and uh, to uh, to make a dam uh, it's a huge structure it's a big civil work right uh, dams are a, such a huge civil work associated uh, behind that so uh, they require very high amount of capital cost compared to any other uh, what i can say dam system but when you uh, and that is why uh, since uh, they also take lot of uh, area that is why land per megawatt okay whatever amount of power you are able to generate per land that also is the largest when you come to hydroelectric power plant okay and then uh, the third problem is that every uh, thing will require like long term construction okay uh, like uh, when you are thinking about extension of like palivasal project and all it took long time and uh, uh, long times or whether you think about iduki or any power plant project it is it takes years like 8 to 10 years and all to construct it completely so that also is a problem when you plan that yeah uh, I can I want to construct a dam then there are, there are a lot of steps involved like first you should see whether it is feasible or not because such a huge capital cost is involved okay so and it takes lot of time to in construction also it's a long term plan but when you are thinking about installing a thermal power plant you just have to make it sure that yeah coal is available or some other kind of fuel is available or it is some wind farm you install it in very less time or solar power plant installed the same day so this kind of uh, not <laughs> not in the same time it's that much very less time will take this kind of uh, installation trouble is the when you come to hydroelectric power plant okay like uh, when you are constructing it you will find a catchment area like uh, what you have in idiki you will see how much water discharge is possible or how much amount of water is need, uh, water will be available how much is the catchment area what is the rainfall through the season right if you don't have enough rainfall and it is going to uh, there is not much water involved then you cannot take it uh, you cannot use that area so after all this long term studies and after uh, and even the construction itself take long term uh, long time so that is why uh, hydro power plants take lot of time and also the capital cost is more so these are some of the disadvantages about hydroelectric power plant we discussed uh, we had a discussion in discussion yesterday and i'm just trying to summarize it here so uh, we have a dam uh, the reservoir right we have a reservoir where, where the place where the catchment area where you are keeping your water right and uh, you have your uh, what i can say the dam constructed on the uh, side of it right this is uh, this is our dam parts okay and uh, 
so uh, th that is the main structure and you have got a spillway here as uh, shown here spillway means uh, that is spillway is uh, some, something where whenever your water is above some level then it needs to be taken out right so that is the spillway means okay and uh, then uh, you have a tunnel or what i can say the whole penstock system penstock is something which takes the water to uh, it means it, uh, it is at an elevation and your powerhouse will, will be at level the difference is what we call as what the difference is called as head as we discussed the, uh, yesterday so that difference we call as head and uh, you should like most of the cases uh, this penstock or the tunnel that will be through underground rather than a pipe outside there, outside okay like bored through the rock so that way it will be and it will come to the uh, turbine the powerhouse and we have a tail race or a pond or a it can be a river okay so that is what I means we obstruct a river flow from a hilltop and we construct a dam there use it for power power, uh, power generation and then leave the river to flow okay so sometimes it obstruct the flow of river so that is what happened and we have a surge chamber again for this uh, uh, for the control of water through the penstock like you have huge water, uh, uh, more amount of water coming in and you want to con uh, control the pressure such cases you have this surge chamber okay so and some uh, we usually use a sluice gate uh, 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 like what i can say at this side in order to so, so that uh, in, inside river you will have a lot of debris things like tree branches and all that should not get into the power plant or it should not get into the turbine chamber for that we usually use a uh, gate uh, kind of structure so that uh, uh, your all debris remains inside the dam and not inside in the uh, powerhouse okay so that this is the structure of uh, uh, hydroelectric power plant and you can identify this different components also right so now this also we discussed we usually use uh, uh, different types of uh, high, uh, tur turbines one is pelton turbine then francis tur turbine and the kaplan turbine these are the three types Pelton is used when you have a high head, okay. You have high head, then you are going to use Pelton. When it comes to low head turbines, then we are using the Kaplan turbine. And when it is in between them, then what we use, we use the Francis turbine. That is why it is also a mixed flow type turbine, okay. We have seen the discrimination and here you can identify the uh, difference in head also, okay. So, this, that is the uh, classification of what turbines. And uh, do you know which kind of turbine is used in our EDK power plant? It is the Pelton type tur turbine. You see why it is. Okay, so the, these are different turbines and this we already discussed in the last class. Now, when you come to a hydroelectric power plant, what are the basic problems that are faced? One is called as the silting. Means, uh, well, what it means is that whenever uh, whenever you are using the flow of water definitely all the debris all the sand everything will come and uh, get uh, it will come uh, nearby this uh, dam penstock and all right so that structure it will uh, come nearby the dam and that is why uh, over a long period of time uh, it, it really affects the working of your dam or your uh, uh, whatever be the capacity of that dam it is getting spoiled so that is what is meant by silting okay you have to uh, maintain it uh, all the time so that is the one problem then there is something called as seepage seepage in the sense this also we discussed i think seepage in the sense when you have uh, a catchment area bottom is uh, rocky uh, is having a rocky structure the water can uh, get through the rock and again uh, get out uh, get out from your catchment area so that again is a loss when it when it comes so, so most like you have you think that uh, you got some rain and uh, all that rain uh, col uh, collected collected water is inside the dam that is not what really happened in the catchment area the water is getting evaporated and it goes uh, up and at the same time there can be seepage through the rock system on the bottom so these ways uh, this has uh, these are one or two one or two, two problems then again always the major con uh, concern when it comes to nuclear power plant and also applicable to hydroelectric power plant is what ecological damage to the region like when you want to construct a huge dam a large dam when it needs to be constructed then you have to e evacuate lot a lot of area right 
and like you are living in that area and one uh, and one day when it gets converted into uh, a dam then it is like a lake and you cannot live in a lake and you have to get uh, you have to be evacuated so and not only the hu uh, human beings but also what but also but also all the flora flora and fauna in that place that needs to, uh, that is like what i can say disturbed by uh, the construction of uh, the dam okay but again every day our load demand is increasing so it is always about whether we want to have power or not so that is the ecological concern as, as i say then lot of displacement of human habitation from areas behind the dam which will be fill, fill it up and become a, like a lake okay so that is why and, uh, about this we will discuss later like this cannot provide a base load and must be used for peak shaving and energy saving in coordination with thermal power plants so what does it mean we will just see in the next slide okay so uh, as uh, all ecologists or all this uh, 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 pe people uh, who are concerned about like uh, hydro power plants the new strategies that are getting adopted is like uh, this way like uh, we are uh, uh, now in india last uh, hydro power, power, power plants new constructions of last hydro power plants are comparatively very less and we are get turning into uh, what means anyhow we have a capacity of around 5000 megawatt right means we have a pot potential there is a hydro power potential of around 5000 megawatt and we have to use it so uh, more, better than affecting the uh, or better than uh, by addressing the ecological concerns what we can do is that we can have small or uh, micro hydro uh, power, power plants like our river of uh, sorry uh, runoff river power plants there we are not having a large storage space so that we are not disturbing the flow of river or we are not uh, have uh, we do, do, do not need a big catchment area whenever you have a high head just keep your turbine in between that flow so such kind of uh, methods are more adopted and in that uh, way we have nano pico or micro hydro power plant basically they uh, whenever your install capacity is less than 1 megawatt you call them nano pico micro there is again classification then there are mini hydro power plants where it's a, a somewhat a, a bit bigger like 1 to 5 megawatt mini hydro power plant so these are the even in kerala and under kcb it is there then small hydro power plants means which are lesser than 15 megawatt okay that that change uh, in megawatt range and uh, th that will be what the availability of water or the flow of water or the head involved okay so based on that we decide what will be appropriate like nowadays uh, uh, some river is flowing through nearby you and you keep a small power, what i can say turbine so th and there is a difference uh, between uh, uh, what i can say in small or uh, or high head uh, power plant we have uh, seen different turbines like what what were the pelton or the kaplan or when it is come come to medium then we use the the francis uh, type of turbine but when it comes to very small uh, uh, power plants we again have some other kind of turbines also special kind of turbines okay so uh, uh, that is the and these are the uh, new strategies that are getting implemented and uh, ministry of mnre or whether it is uh, uh, our state electricity boards they are now saying that even uh, anybody anybody can uh, have a power power plant at the home place or near uh, nearby and or locally so these things are the uh, these are the new strategies like building small uh, hydro power, power plants so that when it comes to like a uh, lot lot many such a micro or mini hydro power plants are there then all together we can have a lot of power okay and that will not cause much of the ec ecological or other issues okay so that is a new strategy now before getting into uh, any other detail let us uh, see some basics uh, in uh, electrical power system uh, so what we are going to discuss is the load curve like as we already uh, know we have this generation and we have consumers so uh, the main the major difference is that okay the major difference is that what is the major difference when it comes to any other uh, power generation or any other type then uh, as i already mentioned like if you uh, want to run a car you can store the petrol and whenever you need to start you can just start okay so but when it comes to electricity unlike water and gas okay like water and gas you can just switch on and use because you are able to store that energy in that f form 
But uh, that is not the case when it comes to electricity. You can store very small amount of electrical energy in batteries, and that is why whenever you are uh, 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 there is always there is always like a control over the generation and demand. Whenever you are switching on a fan or switch here, then that much energy you can say uh, is generated at the same time in the generator. Okay, in several generators. So that is what really happens. So, uh, so the, uh, there is a control over this load and that load we call as the power demand, okay, like we have the production, generation as well as demand, right, and just like any, any product also, like you are generating electricity and you are having what, you are having the consumers or the demand on the other side. So, you generate electricity and at the same time you are supplying it to the other end. It is not like you can store it and then supply it. That is not the, whenever you are ne needed that the same time it is generated. So that is the major difference when it comes to electricity. And that is, uh, that is the problem also. Like nobody knows when you are going to switch on a fan. It is not really about a fan. Like when one industry, uh, industrial load is increasing, when everybody is going to switch on fan, like suddenly rain came and because of that some fault occurred and you are com you are com uh, some part of the area is completely isolated. Then load comes down. Then uh, you have excess generation that cannot happen. So these uh, these things happening in the power system network is quite random. Okay, and when you when you consider power system network, that is considered to be the uh, what I can say the biggest uh, complex network uh, man-made. Okay, maybe like uh, you take a human brain, that is the most complex thing. But man-made system, power system network is the most complex network ever we have. And in that, these occurrences of things are what, like it is random. And based on that, we have to control our generation so that you are able to supply every consumer with a particular voltage at a particular frequency, right? Most of the time at your home, you are getting 50 hertz, uh, 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 50 hertz to 30 volt supply. Okay, that is, po that is possible because we have such a sophisticated control and people working uh, behind that, electrical engineers working behind that. Okay, that is why you are able to get so, uh, what I can say reliable uh, power. So, and this load variation is what we are showing as load curve. Load curve means it is a like, like let me say it's a daily load curve. Okay, time in hours like for 24 hours you are plotting whatever be your uh, load or whatever be your be your demand. So that is what is plotted here like this. Okay, over the day it will vary. Like at the night when you see at 12 o'clock in the night everybody is sleeping and uh, most of the things are not working. So that is why that time only your uh, lighting loads or your air condition loads or your fan loads all those uh, uh, loads are only there when it comes to night 12 o'clock that is what is meant by the zero when it started becoming morning let me say like by 8 and 9 and all all industries every every working uh, working person or every shopping mall everything started working and that is why your load is increasing uh, at this momentum and mostly uh, in our country uh, the uh, peak load will happen during like uh, what I can say evening or night night time okay this is just a representation you can say and again it will come down when it becomes night so this is the load this, this is what is meant by load curve means whatever be our demand that is loaded on one axis and the time on the other axis again this is daily load curve when you take a monthly load curve it, it, it will tell you the whole month okay maybe like in that uh, during Saturday Sunday you will have lesser load compared to Monday to Friday because they are working days Similarly, when you take a yearly a yearly load curve, it is for the whole year, yeah, like from 0 to 365 days you have a load curve, then that will depend on, that, that load will depend on what, it will depend on the season also. In summer, all air conditioners is working as uh, you might be knowing like uh, uh, now uh, pe uh, people are criticizing KCB for putting a high build and we should also think whether we utilize more power in the summer. We had a horrible summer uh, just before and everybody was at home. So, how uh, uh, means this, that also will uh, the, the season and, and different things as you as you can see now everybody is at home so which kind of load is increasing that uh, comparison uh, we cannot compare it uh, all on a sudden like that is a random thing uh, at the same time the last year we were not having a covid situation and everybody was working at their place and this uh, household loads might not be this higher so these all things happen at, at a random basis that is why it is so complex and uh, so these are the load curves and this load curve we can uh, basically uh, what i can say see in uh, two ways one is the base load and another one is the peak load 
what is meant by base load base load is something that is somewhat occurring like all the time as you can see like so uh, below this line this this amount of load it is always there right so that is meant by base load this amount of load is always there so that is base load and there is the another part which is what i what we call as the peak load like uh, 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 when you are uh, uh, based on the time what happened let me say this is the p maximum peak load here so after some time uh, and this much uh, let me say this much part this much part here that can be said, uh, uh, identified based on what i can say daily activities based on the time of the day and ba also ba based on what what season we are this also can be identified but this peak demand that really changes every day and it is quite random okay so this is what is meant this is the base load and this part is the peak load so this uh, 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 this things we have to consider okay and as i said when you are coming into a th when you are thinking about a thermal power plant thermal power plants are like one switched on then it, it is uh, always operating because when you are switching uh, thinking about switching off that thing then it is it will take long time for the temperature to come down okay you uh, you know thermodynamics better means uh, all minus students are mechanical engineering students and so it will take long time uh, that, that time constant will be uh, uh, will be much higher so base load is always met by switching on or off base load is always met by thermal power plant because they can be kept on, on, on always they always they work continuously once it's done never stopped okay like that they are working so they are used to meet the thermal uh, what they are used to meet the base load okay then uh, uh, here the here comes the importance of the hydel power plants whenever you have a peak load as i said it is quite random we do not know when it is happening once people once the electrical engineers or the people behind the electricity board they sit and see that yeah your demand is increasing and you need generation that time that sudden increment is given by whom that sudden increment is given by hydel power plants because in 5 minutes you can change the power output in 5 minutes you can change the power output so that is the importance of hydro power plants when it comes to uh, meeting the load demand whenever you need the uh, uh, need to uh, uh, need to what i can say fix a random change in demand by supplying uh, more power that time you use hydro power plants the same thing applies the other way also like your load suddenly got decremented okay that time also what can happen you can change the level of uh, uh, energy production in the hydro power plant than a thermal power plant so that is the importance okay we will discuss about more uh, of the load, load curve and all in the second module and as i said in, when it comes to a load curve as i said uh, like uh, in the load curve let me say your demand uh, your thermal power plant is like this and you cannot switch it off so let me say at, at a particular time your load curve went like this and this area like let me show it uh, this area like sorry yeah this area your load is uh, here only okay and you already have more generation so some way this generation need to be utilized otherwise you will have problems we will see what are the problems later so it needs to be utilized at same time so at that condition we used a hydro power system as a pump to pump generation let us see what happens like normally what from this reservoir your water will flow downwards and it will be used in the turbine to generate power right yeah, this act as what turbine and generator right that is what uh, what is our normal condition when we have like uh, a, a scenario when you you are not having demand like uh, and your thermal power stations are running at that time we can use it in the other way like it, that is what is called as pump storage type a generator and turbine right turbine is a used to what run the shaft so what is motto motto is like reverse of that like you have power you fed the power to the uh, same generator it will work as a motor right and when it is working as motor your turbine can act as a pump okay just like what we have in our uh, uh, home like in the inside the well you have water what are the components the one is your pump uh, a centrifugal pump kept, kept kept aside and behind that you have what you have your motor also kept right right so the similar way uh, the generator can act as a motor and you, uh, your turbine can act as a pump so that that is the importance of this reservoir too then your tail race acts as a reservoir or the, it, it, will, it will act as a tail race pond that, that time we call so uh, this water will be pumped up to the dam 
or the, to the reservoir one when you have excess amount of power. So that that time what will happen? This uh, excess amount of power we have that can be utilized, or when you are you have what low uh, power demand. So that time it can be utilized to pump this water up. Why it is pumped to pump back? Because whenever again you have a high load as it is happening here, that time whatever pumped water to the reservoir that again can be used for generation of power, right? Like we are able to store the power. Our main problem is uh, what electricity cannot be stored to some extent. So we are whenever there is a low demand, we are able to store the power back to the reservoir uh, in, uh, as the as the potential energy of water and again use it using our pumped storage type devices. Okay, that is uh, another type of hydroelectric power plant. Some of them are already there. So, like in Tamil Nadu or uh, Sri Lanka in Andhra, we have pumped storage type. Hydel power plants. Okay, that is quite useful when it comes to this uh, usage, usage. Clear? So uh, with this, uh, we are uh, uh, what I can say. Uh, with this hydroelectric uh, power plant discussion is over, and from next class we will see thermal power plants. Afterwards we will see uh, nuclear power plants and uh, wind, tidal, and all. So uh, that is what we are going to do. And uh, uh, please uh, write your notes on this uh, lecture. Uh, I don't want you to copy the slide. Just uh, write your understanding. And uh, 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 most of you did not uh, write the first uh, uh, lecture notes also. So, uh, uh, what, what, how much you write is not important. Okay, this will be considered if you are your attendance. Uh, whether you write your notes and upload. Okay, I don't care uh, how much you write or how much good you write. There is no marks for that, but it will be considered for attendance. So, write your notes for uh, notes and upload it. Thank you.